I simulated the 2024 Formula 1 season a thousand times and the results are going to blow your mind. I used a modified version of Formula 1 2023 and I found a surprise race winner, a team that scored a record-breaking number of DNFs and the biggest shock championship winner of all time. So let's get straight into it and see if you agree with the stats. I feel like I should say before we get into it that the simulation used was based off a combination of the second half of last season, so everything post-summer break, plus a random multiplier that increases the quality of all the teams based on a few factors like the team's facilities and the personnel to try and simulate a winter break. But it was also a little bit random. Sometimes the teams had a great winter break and other times it really didn't go well for them. And finally, another multiplier which tries to emulate the upgrades that teams will bring over the course of a season to again make it as close as I could to the ups and downs of a real Formula One campaign with all of its unpredictabilities. However, with all that said, Let's get into the statistics. I figured we'd start at the back of the pack and see which teams came out worst from these thousand simulations in 9th and 10th place. And it's probably not too much of a surprise that in 583 of the simulations, Haas came last in the Constructors' Championship. And then second most likely to finish last is Kick Sauber, who finished last in 351 simulations. Although they are most likely to finish 9th place, as they did 45.9% of the time. In fact, the only team that was even close to being in the bottom two, other than Haas, and kick was Williams who finished 9th 112 times and 10th 63 times. Although quite surprisingly Alpine finished in the bottom two in 6% of the simulations and even RB finished in 9th place 13 times. Although maybe the simulation was predicting that Daniel Ricciardo moves to the Red Bull team after a few races and that's why RB finishes so low in the standings. Taking a step up to the teams in the lower midfield and the simulation is expecting a pretty even battle between RB, Alpine and Williams for 6th, 7th and 8th place and although it's fairly close Williams were the team that most commonly finished in 8th place doing so 44% of the time although there were a few simulations where Aston Martin finished 8th Alpine is second most likely to finish in 8th doing so 255 times however Alpine are the most likely team to finish in 7th place as they did in 369 of the simulations but there were 274 where it was RB and 241 where it was Williams. So it is very close between those three teams. But what's maybe most crazy across these simulations is that there were worlds where seven different teams managed to finish in seventh place. I mean, Mercedes even managed to finish seventh on four occasions. And if that happened, I think Toto Wolf might actually explode. Although I'm not sure he'd be happy about finishing sixth in 58 of the simulations either, to be honest. Moving up to sixth place, even though RB managed to finish there 36.7% of the time, Aston Martin were in the mix for sixth place and finished there 25.6% of the time. Alpine finished there 20.7% of the time. And even Williams managed to finish in sixth place 105 times across these thousand simulations, which means if these simulations are anything to go by, we're going to see a proper battle between these midfield teams as they're all going to be scrapping for points on every occasion possible when somebody in the top five teams makes a mistake or there's a reliability problem or just a little bit of a chaotic race. But having said all that, fifth place is absolute chaos, with eight of the ten teams managing to finish in fifth place across these simulations. Everyone from Ferrari down to Kick Sauber, that's right, Kick, who never managed a sixth place finish, managed to finish fifth place in the Constructors' Championship in two of these simulations, and Valtteri Bottas must have just been absolutely electric. However, when it comes to the team most likely to finish in fifth place, it's actually very close. Aston Martin finished fifth in 302 of these simulations, Mercedes finished 5th in 285 of them, and then you could also throw RB in the mix as well, they managed to finish 5th in 197 of these simulations. So I'm expecting one of the most exciting midfield battles that we have seen in Formula 1 history in 2024, Otherwise, I'm going to be very disappointed because fourth place was also split moderately evenly between McLaren, Mercedes and Aston Martin, with Mercedes being the most likely team to finish in fourth place, according to the simulations, as they did in 33.3% of them to Aston Martin's 23.3 and McLaren's 22.4. And that's because McLaren are the most likely team to displace them in the top three, with the Papaya team finishing in third place 336 times, which wasn't the most. Ferrari actually finished in third place 
354 times, but we'll get to where they finished more often in just a second. Because I do think it's interesting that Mercedes still have a 1 in 5 chance of finishing in the top 3, despite bringing a brand new concept once again and Lewis Hamilton leaving at the end of the season, whilst Aston Martin, RB and Alpine all managed to sneak third and fourth place finishes in various seasons, which considering how far off the pace they were at the end of last year, would be absolutely mind-blowing. Like, imagine Yuki Tsunoda or Pierre Gasly getting consistent podiums. And finally, the thing you've all been waiting for, the first and second place finishes. And there's a nice little battle between Ferrari and McLaren for second place, although Ferrari does come out on top, finishing second in 41.4% of the simulations to McLaren's 32.8%, which is great reading if you're a Lewis Hamilton fan, because he's leaving Mercedes, who only managed to finish in second place 10.2% of the time, and I don't think he'd be overly happy if Mercedes do finish above Ferrari next season, although I can can imagine there were probably quite a few questions thrown in RB's direction on the three occasions that they managed to finish in second place just behind their sister team. However, the most obvious thing that jumps out to me here is that Red Bull managed to win 867 of these thousand simulations. And I suppose considering how dominant they were last year, it makes sense that they have a 99.8% chance of finishing in the top two. So if you're hoping for a title battle in 2024, there aren't many universes where that happens, but hopefully we're living in one. So don't give up hope just yet. And whilst we're here, I thought, why not show you some of my highlights from these thousand simulations? And I am really, really hoping that some of these simulations come true. Let's check out some of the best ones. I think the simulation 872 goes down as possibly my favorite, not only because it's one of the 42 occasions where McLaren managed to pick up the Constructors' Championship, it also saw Oscar Piastri in only his second season in Formula One pick up the World Drivers' Championship, beating out Max Verstappen in second place and his teammate Lando Norris in third place, which would make him the first driver since 2008 to pick up a championship in his second season, because of course Lewis Hamilton managed to win his first World Championship in his second season of Formula One, and Oscar Piastri did it in style too. He managed to win nine of the 24 races, which is incredibly impressive considering to this point he hasn't won a single race in his career yet unless you count sprint races. Do we count sprint races? Don't we count sprint races? I never really know. I'm going to be honest, this simulation, simulation 374, would go down in history as the most random Formula 1 season that has ever occurred. I feel like it might have been a glitch in the matrix, but Fernando Alonso managed to pick up his third world championship. So if you're a fan of the Spaniard, this is the simulation for you. However, if you were paying close attention, Aston Martin not once finished top of the constructor standings, which means even though Fernando Alonso won the championship, Lance Stroll still cost them the Constructors title and the team in green finished in second place to Red Bull. But as I was saying, this simulation was just chaos because amongst Fernando Alonso winning the championship, Nico Hülkenberg also picked up a curse-breaking third place finish during a Grand Prix. And don't worry, there's more on the Haas cars later, but how amazing would it be for Fernando Alonso to not only get win 33 this season, but also championship number three? Simulation 591 wasn't actually that exciting. Max Verstappen won the championship and he won it by a considerable margin, but there was one absolute gem of a race which saw the Williams of Alex Albon win a Grand Prix. That means Williams would have picked up their first win since the Spanish Grand Prix in 2012, where Pastor Maldonado not only set the timing sheets on fire, but literally set his garage on fire as well. And Alex Albon's victory would lead the team to their highest constructor standings finished since 2017, where they finished in fifth place. But more importantly, wouldn't it just be lovely to see Alex Albon on the top step of the podium for Williams? He's been through so much, the team have come so far, and just them having this moment together before he probably moves on to a bigger team would just be incredible. As you can imagine in most of these simulations, Max Verstappen became the 2024 world champion. But the reason simulation 92 stood out to me was Max Verstappen didn't win the championship, but also he didn't even finish in the top three. He finished in 
fifth place in the standings. That's right, the driver who won 19 races last season, put together the longest winning streak in history, and scored more points than anybody ever, had an absolute disaster. Charles Leclerc ended up being world champion, Carlos Sainz finished in second place, Sergio Perez, that's right, Max's teammate finished in third place, and Lando Norris finished in fourth place. He only managed to win three races across the whole season due to countless reliability issues, and I know that there's always this kind of slight rumor about Max Verstappen retiring early, but I think if he had a season this bad, he might actually go through with it. And before you Mercedes fans laugh at Max Verstappen for coming fifth in the championship too hard, there were four occasions where Mercedes finished in seventh place in the Constructors' Championship, and Simulation 274 was the worst of that bunch because it saw both Mercedes drivers consistently dropping out of qualifying in Q1, followed up by Grand Prix where they didn't manage to move that far forward in the pecking order because they only scored 46 points across the entire season, which averages out at less than a point per driver per Grand Prix. And if this happens, not only will Lewis Hamilton be leaving for Ferrari, I can imagine George Russell will also be looking to drive somewhere else because he probably could have done better by just staying at Williams. I said before that we'd get back to mentioning Haas, and I mean, a lot of the simulations were fairly negative around the American team. They finished 10th place in the constructor standings almost 60% of the time, but this simulation in particular was incredibly disastrous for the Haas team because not only did they finish in last place in the constructors, from the 24 races, so 48 outings because they have two drivers, they retired or didn't start the Grand Prix on 17 occasions. That means 35% of the time, at least one of the Haas cars was not able to complete the Grand Prix. In fact, the worst weekend of the season saw Kevin Magnussen not even qualify for the Grand Prix and Nico Hulkenberg crash outcome race day. In this universe, I think that Gene Haas wouldn't just sell the team, he might just turn up and burn the whole thing down. So having gone through all of those simulations, 2024 might be an absolute banger of a season after all. <laughs> now this took absolutely ages for me to make, but if you have enjoyed it, let me know in the comments down below and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see. Maybe a version of this where we do the driver's championship or add specific teams to the standings. As I said, let me know in the comments down below what ideas you've got for this. Shout out to James Lawrence Alcott once again for the original idea. He is a massive inspiration for the channel and if you're a football fan, please go and check him out. And if you have enjoyed this video, I also made this video here where I predict the 2020 24 Drivers' Championship, and there are already a few people in the comments that are completely flaming my decisions, so it's definitely worth checking out. So click that link, and I'll see you over there.